Thank you for attending. Uh, we were planning to speak in Arabic and English as we used it to do in Egypt, but we have Dr. Emilio from Mexico and uh, his or her, I don't know, his preferred language is English. So can we speak in English, please? Just to allow her to share or he to share with us. Uh, just a few points before the start. Uh, I want to thank you all for attending and uh, for Dr. Abdul Ati for arranging this meeting and for Dr. Mohamed Abdul Latif. Second point, uh, I will speak today, as you know, about management of pneumothorax, with a short, with, which is a short uh, topic, does not need uh, so much talk. But I will speak in, in little bit details because our aim is just uh, not to say uh, the management is ABC. We need to build a knowledge and you know uh, how to get the information especially our junior colleagues. Uh, please confirm that your uh, mics are muted and I will continue to let you able to unmute yourself uh, because if you miss my voice at any time, you can announce that to me. Uh, finally, I will be happy to receive your uh, feedback on the, face, uh, on the fa and Facebook group uh, after the uh, presentation. So we will start now. So our talk today, I, I told you, uh, is uh, the management of pneumothorax, which is not a difficult topic, it's an easy one. Diagnosis of pneumothorax is usually easy, as you see this uh, photo, but let me tell you one story. One day I was on call and uh, I received an, uh, a call from my colleague in the emergency. Yes, Dr. Rad, you want to say something? I received a call from my colleague in the emergency that he has a baby, he has a child about one and a half years who is in respiratory failure. And uh, his mother is crying and telling that the baby was fine and uh, at all of a sudden the baby uh, went in very bad situation. So quickly the okay. baby was intubated. Sorry again. The baby was uh, intubated quickly, admitted to the pediatric ICU and an X-ray and the blood gas was requested. His x-ray showed um, a black, white, a black uh, right lung that looks like an hemothorax. So quickly, we uh, inserted a chest drain on the right side, but the baby did not improve. And the blood gas showed severe mixed acidosis, respiratory and metabolic. Uh, we noticed some uh, pus coming from the chest tube, coming out from the chest tube. Uh, then... Uh, we sent it to the lab. So we thought that is um, a staph pneumonia, which may cause uh, some abscess and uh, it will drain bus uh, in the chest tube. But the baby didn't improve. We were expecting after the range of the pneumothorax, the baby will improve uh, very quickly. We went back to the mother and spoke to her, what happened to your baby? She started to calm down and she told us a very strange story, simply that the baby has tetralogy of fallow. We were amazed. You said, my baby is, was very well. She said, yes, he is the tragedy of follow his usual sign of, but he was very well and now he is collapsing. So it was a cyanotic spell. And the baby doesn't have a pneumothorax. We inserted an unnecessary chest drain on the right side of the baby. And because the baby has severe pulmonary stenosis and he is in um, tet spells, his uh, pulmonary blood flow was too low to cause uh, any bronchovascular markings, so we misdiagnosed it as a pneumothorax. That has been a long time ago. Dr. Amr, please, can you raise your voice a little bit? Yes, yes, I will. Oh, well, that's my, maybe my mic. Is, is it okay, Dr. Mohammed? now? Yes, thank you. Dr. Mohammed, thank you. So at that time, we went back and advised the case we found it a tetralogy follow, not a pneumothorax, and that bus was not a bus, it was a chylothorax, so we caused an injury of the thoracic duct. So diagnosis of pneumothorax, what I want to say now, diagnosis of pneumothorax is usually very simple, very simple, but rarely it may be difficult and misleading. And this is the first message of this presentation. Every time you are going to do a procedure, give, you a, give yourself a time out to think and, and recheck again, are you doing the right a choice or not. Many times, most of times, 99%, you are doing the right thing. But in 1%, you may, are, you may uh, 
selecting the non-proper management. So please, every time, just recheck yourself, even if you are doing a very simple procedure. The X-ray on the uh, any, uh, that you can see now does not show uh, any thorax. By the way, maybe one or two of you think that is any thorax. It's not any thorax actually. Uh, but you don't know the history, so you may misdiagnose it as any thorax. It is not. And that's the second message. Please usually think about the uh, history very well. Take a good history before doing any intervention. If you can see this uh, three images, this is a previous X-ray on the left bottom. This baby has a uh, left pulmonary hypoplasia, and the uh, right lung has a marked compensatory emphysema. That seems like a uh, pneumothorax if you don't look uh, carefully to it, and that's his uh, CT. If you look here, there is some uh, bronchovascular marking is here, some lung tissue. There is some lung tissue here, but look in pneumothorax, you cannot find any lung tissue. That's the difference. You will not find this case every day, but I want to say usually look carefully at his history and recheck yourself before doing any procedure. Just give yourself a time out. I remember one day one senior colleague has inserted a chest drain in the wrong side on the health lung, not in the pneumothorax side. And that sometimes happens. He, he's a senior man, but uh, he was rushed and working quickly, so he made this. So that's the first message. You can diagnose it very quickly by transillumination or X-ray. I will not speak about management uh, diagnosis in details. It's easy. I will go quickly to the uh, pathophysiology and the management. So that is the timeline of our presentation today. An introduction, pathophysiology, lines of management, summary, and your discussion. So you know that pneumothorax is a common disease in, uh, in ICUs because it happens spontaneously in many infants. So when they cry vigorously, they uh, can uh, cause pneumothorax to themselves. Uh, this is from every textbook. The incidence is much higher if the lung is not healthy. If the lung has an RDS, has pneumonia, in this situation, the incidence may uh, be much higher than healthy uh, neonates. After the development of surfactant, uh, the incidence of pneumothorax decreased, but it still may happen up to 10% in spontaneously breathing infants with RDS without any pressure support, just with room air or nasal cannula. The best physiology, which is very uh, important, and usually I like to go to best physiology, because when we understand the best physiology, everything will be easy later on. Best physiology of uh, pneumothorax is very easy also, because when you over the alveoli, if there is an alveoli here and you over distend it, the airway will escape to the interstitium, to the uh, very vascular bundle, then it will track to the pleural space and cause the uh, pneumothorax. That is the pathophysiology of pneumothorax. It's very simple. But this slide is more important because in preterm babies, as you know, they have um, a very thick interstitium. So when the air tracks from the alveolus, which most of the time is, is not well developed alveolus, it will stay in the interstitial space in the very vascular bundle, in the very alveolar bundle, and it will not, will not track to the pleura. That's why you see. Uh, many uh, pulmonary interstitial emphysemas in preterm babies, but you don't see it so much in adult, uh, I'm sorry, in term babies. So as you know, most of our babies are less, than, are less than 35 weeks and they are in the secular stage. If you remember the um, lung development passes into five stages, the embryonic stage and pseudoglandular stage. Uh, canalicular stage, secular stage, and the alveolar stage. The alveolar stage starts about 35 weeks. So before this stage, most of the lung is in the secular stage where the in, uh, interstitium is very abundant and it is thick. So the air cannot track easily to the, um, the pleura and it stays in the, in the interstitium causing pulmonary interstitial emphysema. Uh, and that's not our topic today. In the management, simply we have three options. I will go in detail in the three options. They are either either observation, chest drain, or thoracosynthesis or needle aspiration. So, not all um, pneumothoraces need uh, chest drain. Some of them may need only observation, and some of them may need needle aspiration. And that is the main aim of this presentation today. 
first of all, first uh, management is observation. And observation in the NICU is very important. Many diseases, you may manage it by observation. Many times you find that the disease is not black or white, it is gray, and you don't know which way you should go. So in this time, you should observe carefully. But the problem of observation, you should be, you should wait for one or two or three hours and look carefully to the baby. So what is the evidence behind the observation? So observation, what is the evidence behind the observation? There is a study published in uh, 2011 in Bolvedev, in uh, University of Bolvedev, and uh, they, expert, they studied the resolution of experimental pneumothorax by room air. I will go quickly through the study. That is a study. This study uh, is an experimental study. So they concluded that the study um, in a initial uh, clinical observation of pneumothorax uh, can cause resolution of uh, the pneumothorax. So you sometimes may not intervene uh, with the pneumothorax. You will just observe the pneumothorax and it may lead to 100% resolution of pneumothorax. I will just go quickly uh, through this study just to let you know something. This study is an animal study. It was done in rabbits. So they select the rabbits. Their weight is 2.5 to 3 kilograms, which are about the weight of our uh, newborn babies. Uh, the new cerex was, wasn't used in these rabbits. So it was a healthy lung. It is not diseased lung. It was induced pneumothorax. We punctured the pleura to cause uh, pneumothorax, and they continued the observation of these animals to see what happens to the pneumothorax, and they concluded that uh, observation uh, alone can lead to a resolution of pneumothorax, which is small, but observation is not appropriate in patients with more than 20% collapse of the lung. I'm showing you this study because I noticed many times we go to a conclusion of a study and we don't read the study. We need to read more studies and you know how people create medicine, how they create evidence. We need to look at all these studies and to understand uh, how they create the evidence. Because as I told you in the beginning, our aim here is to create knowledge, is not, not to just say what the management of pneumothorax. So observation, though well, the, the previous study was an animal study, but in every textbook, they have written that a small pneumothorax uh, in a spontaneously breathing infant, so he is not in support, can be observed closely until spontaneous resolution occurs. In Fenerov, 2015, there is a new edition of this book. Uh, in asymptomatic patients without underlying pulmonary disease, no treatment is required. However, close observation for worsening pneumothorax and development of respiratory symptoms is clearly needed. So whenever you decide not to intervene and you want to um, observe only, that's a very good choice. But don't forget to close observe the baby. So how do you look to this, this X-ray? This baby has a pneumothorax here, as you see on the uh, left side. And you can see the cell sign when air tracks under the uh, thymus gland and left it up, causing like a cell. So that's what we call a cell sign. It's very clear here. But this uh, pneumothorax is large or small. If you look carefully here, you can see some of air in front of the lung, in the anterior mediastinum, not only this lateral part. So we don't know if it's a small, large, or, or medium-sized pneumothorax because it is, so, um, to some extent, it's subjective. You can measure it by the X-ray machine. You can measure this distance and uh, divide it by the longer distance, and you know how much is it. Uh, they say if it is uh, more than 20% of the lung uh, volume, it is a uh, large pneumothorax. If it's less than two, uh, 20%, uh, it is a small pneumothorax. If you look here, this part, I think it is less than fifth of the uh, lung diameter. So it is a small pneumothorax, but you cannot um, guarantee this because most of air may be in front or, or behind the lung. So uh, a lateral view may help you here. If you make a lateral view or a cross table view, you can, large, uh, you can find a larger bucket of, uh, of air in front or behind the lung. Uh, and the most important is the clinical picture because we don't treat the x-rays, we treat the patients clinically. So if you say that's an hemothorax, but the baby is, is decompensating in this situation, you may need to intervene or insert a chest drain, not only to observe, because we never treat MRs. 
the pneumothorax usually resolves spontaneously in two days, and you can do frequent uh, x-rays according to the initial situation. You can individualize your decision, and you decide when to repeat the x-ray according to the severity of the pneumothorax and the basic clinical condition of the baby. So first option is just observation. If the lung is healthy and the pneumothorax is not large and the uh, baby is not on positive pressure ventilation, you can observe the baby for spontaneous resolution. In this, the vesicular pleura will absorb the air. Your second choice is to insert a chest tube. That is a chest tube kit, and we will not speak about the chest tube kit. It's not our topic today. It's not happening to my mouse, okay. Uh, so, in ventilated patients with large tension pneumothorax, the initial management is to wean pressures until uh, you insert a chest tube. This is what's written in Fanaro. Uh, so, this X-ray, you can see the um, air is massive here in the right lung, pushing the whole mediastinum to the uh, left side. And you can see here, if, if it is clear, the endotracheal tube is here, so that trachea is markedly shifted to the left. This is a tension pneumothorax. So in this situation, you need to drain it. Tension pneumothorax, by definition, from uh, the neonatal resuscitation book, the NRB book, safe edition, is, uh, is large enough to uh, interfere with the venous return and causing desaturation and bradycardia. So whenever the baby has desaturation, bradycardia, impaired venous return, hypotension, this is attention pneumothorax. If it, even if you see it small on the X-ray, but it causes tension because the X-ray may, may be misleading. It's a life-threatening emergency and requires uh, fast evacuation. These are a group of X-rays showing tension pneumothorax. But tension pneumothorax is a clinical diagnosis. It's a pneumothorax that causes interference with the venous return and systemic circulation, causing the baby to de uh, desaturate and have bradycardia. These are different tumors. But the chest tube is not very benign. It may have some complications. Uh, it may cause lung damage. It may cause diaphragmatic injury. It may cause bleeding. It causes pain. Um, it may fail to evacuate the air if it went into the wrong uh, place. It may cause infection. It has many, many complications, especially in, in the tiny babies. I have seen one day um, a chest drain were inserted in the left side of a very tiny baby, extreme breamy. It causes injury of the heart, one of the major vessels. Uh, in the up-to-date, they have written tension pneumothorax, and the pneumothorax that develops on mechanically ventilated infants usually need chest tube placement for definitive drainage, and this resolution happens over about three days, and sometimes it may recur. So attention pneumothorax have to be drained by a chest tube. So our second option is chest tube placement. If it is tension pneumothorax or the baby is, is on um, both the pressure ventilation, and you expect that the pneumothorax will worsen, so it's better to keep a chest, place, a chest tube in place, uh, preventing the baby from collapsing at any time. The third option is thoracosynthesis or needle aspiration. That is a two-way valve that we use in the uh, uh, needle aspiration. And that's how we aspirate the needle. Here you can see, I don't know what happened to my mouse. Here you can see the butterfly and that you aspirate air then you uh, close the board toward the uh, butterfly and open the board toward the air. Then you evacuate air out. Then you aspirate again. Then you evacuate out until air comes out, stops. Uh, so this study uh, providing some evidence behind needle aspiration. Uh, this study was published in 2008. And uh, it said that you may treat uh, pneumothorax by observation or by needle aspiration, not only by chest tube. In this study, they enrolled about exactly 131 patients. Uh, 101 of them were treated initially with a chest tube, and uh, 35 of them uh, without a chest tube. This group was divided into two groups, one with needle aspiration, and another group with expect expectant management, which is only observation. And they concluded that it's possible to treat expectantly without initial chest tube placement a selected group of ventilated neonates with pneumothorax. So even if the baby is uh, on uh, assisted ventilation or CBAP or mechanical ventilation low setting, you can uh, treat him by needle aspiration only 
if you feel that uh, it will not recur. But if it recurs, you can uh, reinsert a chest tube. This uh, article published in July 2018 in JAMA Pediatrics, and they studied the effect of needle aspiration uh, on pneumothorax and subsequent chest drain uh, insertion. In this study, um, they make a question. Among newborns receiving respiratory support, so these babies are on respiratory support, does treating pneumothorax uh, diagnosed on chest X-ray with needle aspiration results in a fewer infants having chest drain insertion. So they will collect all babies on uh, respiratory support and with a confirmed pneumothorax by X-ray and they will do a needle aspiration to a group of them and they will see if this needle aspiration will prevent insertion of a chest drain or not. Uh, what is the importance of this study? They said that treatment options of symptomatic pneumothorax in newborns include needle aspiration or chest drain. And there is a little uh, consensus as to uh, the preferred treatment. We don't know which is better, is to insert the chest tube from the first uh, choice or you just uh, drain it by needle aspiration. So uh, there is a lack of evidence between chest tube and needle aspiration, aspiration which is better. This is a uh, randomized control trial uh, conducted between uh, October 2013 and December 2016 uh, in five tertiary European natal intensive care units. Um, they collected 70 patients, which is a good number for pneumothorax, and they randomized them one to one. The primary outcome was to measure if the uh, chest drain will be needed after uh, pneumothorax is drained by uh, a needle or not. I will go through this algorithm quickly just to let our general colleagues here in the group uh, to be used to look at the studies, how it's formed and how the evidence is, uh, is, is made. So they enrolled initially, we said here they, uh, the study included 70 patients here, 70 patients, but these 70 patients are the final patients. Initially they enrolled about uh, 213, they uh, excluded 137 uh, of them because uh, 89 pneumothorax was not drained, just observed, and 32 was not randomized uh, for different reasons. And six, 76 infants randomized. 39 of them went to chest drain and uh, 30, 39 went to chest drain and 37 went to, went to needle aspiration. And they excluded two here one was a putter sequence, and the other one uh, was not consented. They could not reach the parents. Finally, and here they excluded four. Uh, finally, they randomized 33 against 37. And they concluded that needle aspiration significantly reduces the rate of uh, chest drain insertion in symptomatic newborns with pneumothorax on X-ray. Uh, it should be used at the initial method of draining draining uh, radiologically confirmed pneumothorax in symptomatic infants. So here they recommend to try needle aspiration in any, in any uh, pneumothorax confirmed by X-ray, uh, but it's a single study. So you cannot make uh, a very strong evidence that all pneumothorax should be treated by needle aspiration, but that is their recommendation here. So what is in the neonatology box? Uh, in Fenero, they said that fracosynthesis or needle aspiration is used for emergency evacuation of large pneumothorax, pneumothorax in unstable infant. In this situation, I think all of us, all of us, has done this in the pediatric intensive care or in neonatal intensive care, when there is acute pneumothorax and it is uh, increasing quickly and the baby going to collapse, you have no choice other than aspirating this air till you insert the chest drain because chest drain, as you know, may take few minutes five to seven minutes. During this minute, you have to save the life of the patient by the respiration. Uh, in Fenerov, the same book, uh, thoracosynthesis might be the only treatment needed in non-ventilated babies. However, reference of pneumothorax, however, recurrence of pneumothorax should be with the, the insertion of chest drain. So as we said before, you can try needle aspiration in any pneumothorax, but uh, if it recurs, you have to insert a chest tube. 
uh, thoracosynthesis can also be used as a temporizing measure that we have said just now is a temporizing me measure before chest tube insert uh, insertion in ventilated infants. So when you have no time to insert a chest tube or you are going to prepare the, for insertion of chest tube sterilization and preparation, you can just clean the skin by chlorhexidine or alcohol and then you can aspirate the air by a needle and this, be, this, this will be a temporizing measure. In the up to date, they have written the same. It can be used emergently in symptomatic pneumothorax. It may be the only intervention needed. Sometimes you don't need to do more. You just aspirate it. You find the baby is good. You can uh, wean the pressures to make the MAP, the mean airway pressure, lower if the baby tolerates. And you can wait and observe. Then you may not insert the chest tube. Uh, that's how we insert the, the, the we can. Uh, use needle aspiration, either we use the butterfly needle, which is the scalp vein needle, or the angiocath. The angiocath is a routine cannula. The angiocath, we usually use this uh, pink one, which is uh, 20 uh, gauge. We have different sizes, you know, but I will show you this file quickly. So these are different sizes of, uh, of needles, but please don't select uh, the small size because it will kink and you will not able to evacuate the air and you think that the procedure failed. It's not a failure of the procedure, it's a failure of the cannula. So please select the large one, which is 20 gauge. Uh, you insert this needle either in the uh, second intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line uh, or in the uh, fourth intercostal space uh, in the anterior clavicular line according to the uh, maximum collection of air. Both, you can do both of them. Uh, this is from the uh, neonatal resuscitation book. So here is the real scenario. This baby is a term baby delivered by cesarean section for fetal distress. He passed this through a meconium stained lichor, um, cried this wound after birth. He has a uh, tachypnea after 10 minutes, uh, hence shifted to the nursery. In nursery, his respiratory rate starts to increase, and he is saturating 100%. So I, an x ray was done and showed this pneumothorax. This case was in, in, in my unit. So the baby shifted to me. I bought these three, uh, uh, these three images because here you can see the, the, uh, the pneumothorax is not very small. You can see it's a large one. It's a large one, but the baby was saturating 100% just a nasal cannula. So here, a uh, chest tube, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a lateral decubitus uh, or cross table view may help you to confirm the size of the of the pneumothorax. Anyway, because this baby was stable, uh, we decided to drain it by needle aspiration and just observe. The baby was only on nasal cannula, and even you can see the nasal cannula here. He was only on nasal cannula, not intubated and not on any pressure. And this is the first x ray after drainage. Immediately after drainage, we inserted uh, a needle here and aspirated a 40 ml of air. I remember this case very well. Uh, and the baby uh, stabilized it, and it became it continued to be the cabinet, but improved. So this is the first X-ray, and this is the second X-ray. As you see here, there is some um, pulmonary edema or re-evacuation edema, which happens after drainage of pneumothorax. When you drain pneumothorax or any pleural uh, collection, you may have some uh, pulmonary edema, re-evacuation edema. But on the final X-ray before the charge, after a few days, the baby. Uh, has a clear lung field. So we did not insert any tubes here or uh, we just only uh, evacuated to bind the respiration. So don't forget, we have three options, either to observe the baby if uh, it is a small pneumothorax and the baby is spontaneously breathing, not on pressure, or you just go for thracosynthesis, need the aspiration if you feel that the baby is not on, on high pressure and you can control it by the aspiration or go to directly to thoracotomy or and chest drain insertion if uh, you feel that uh, it is attention pneumothorax or it may require. So what's nitrogen washout? I didn't mention it in the beginning. Nitrogen washout, and it is still used on some units. I will speak about it uh, in little bit details because uh, there is no evidence about it. Uh, but why they think about nitrogen washout? Nitrogen washout simply if you are not uh, familiar with the terminology, means uh, to give the baby more oxygen, make him on a uh, higher percentage of oxygen. 
This is a first idea of nitrogen wash out. It is the hyperbaric chamber, if you read about it, and the uh, diving decompression sickness uh, occurs with divers. I will not speak in details about it. You can go and read about it. Uh, but the rationale that, as you know, the composition of air is uh, about 80% nitrogen and 20% uh, uh, oxygen, exactly 21% oxygen and 78% nitrogen and 1% um, carbon dioxide and others. So uh, oxygen therapy lowers the partial pressure of, of nitrogen, which may in turn accelerate the rate of absorption of air from the pleural cavity and the hot lung expansion. Um, when pneumothorax happens, what goes to the pleural space is an air. This air is 80% nitrogen. So the idea here, if you give the baby 100% oxygen, you change the concentration of air inside the alveoli. You will make the alveoli full of oxygen, although the uh, pleural space is full of nitrogen. So the nitrogen will pass from the pleural space to the alveolar, according to con concentration gradient of nitrogen. That's called nitrogen washout. That's theoretical. That's theoretically speaking, no evidence behind it. So theoretically, uh, uh, so theoretically, uh, of nitrogen wash, I propose that the inhalation of 100% oxygen reduces the partial pressure of nitrogen in the alveolus compared to the alveolar space. The alveolar space will contain 80% nitrogen. Uh, the alveolar space will contain 100% oxygen, but the uh, pleural space will contain only 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. This gradient difference causes the nitrogen to diffuse from the pleural space into the alveolar, resulting in the reabsorption of air from the pleura. And this will fast in the pneumothorax. But this is theoretical. This is theoretical. This is theoretical. Okay, I, I tried to, to find an evidence behind it. I find uh, uh, this uh, statement in the uh, Medescape. Medescape is a, a good website. Uh, and they mentioned here uh, in the management of pneumothorax several options that are available to restore uh, air from the pleura, including conventional, uh, include observation, administration of supplemental oxygen. Uh, aspiration, chest tube placement, and thoracotomy. Uh, when I go to the details down in the same website, you find this statement. Oxygen administration at three liters uh, nasal cannula or higher flow treats possible hypoxemia and is associated with fourfold increase in the rate of pleural effusion. Uh, I'm sorry, pleural air. So they claim here that uh, giving a higher concentration of oxygen uh, may fasten the uh, evacuation of air by four folds. But if you look here, although Medescape is a good website, it didn't mention any reference here to this statement. It didn't find, I, I cannot find any reference for this statement here in the website. So when you read even from a good website or a good, a good journal or a good book, just look to the reference. Just try to be used to this, to uh, search for the reference and look how evidence is made. So, but this is my notice. No friends, and they didn't mention how much of I two we should give the baby. They said they said they said only we can uh, give oxygen administration, but how many liters exactly? How much oxygen? Fifty uh, percent, eighty percent, or hundred percent? They didn't mention it. Uh, I searched for this. I found an article published on 1971. It is too old, too too old actually. Um, so you cannot rely on it. Uh, strongly and it said nearly the same they concluded that uh, they concluded that they only uh, enrolled at 22 patients 22 patients um, the rate of absorption of gas from pneumothorax was studied in 12 patients breathing air and the 10 patients breathing air and the higher concentration of oxygen so 12 patients on air and the twin and 10 patients on higher FI2 and also they, they didn't mention how much FI2 uh, and they said uh, that the mean rate of absorption increases fourfold during periods of oxygen therapy. I think that is the reference from the Medscape, although they didn't mention it there. But it is, as you see, it is a very small sample and it is not well designed. I cannot even find the, the, the full article, but it is too old. It's too old article, so it's not a good evidence. Uh, there is uh, an article published in uh, uh, 2017 in the Journal of Thoracic Disease, and they say, does oxygen therapy increase the resolution rate of, of primary spontaneous pneumothorax? I will 
uh, log to be uh, study quickly, just to show you some one fact, because uh, look here, they said uh, oxygen therapy increases the resolution of this uh, spontaneously occurring pneumothorax. However, uh, routine use of oxygen therapy in patients with a small pneumothorax should be considered more carefully. Well controlled uh, prospective studies are required to confirm the indication of oxygen therapy. So this is a retrospective study. And if you read it in details, look, the mean age of the patients here is 19 years, 19 years, not 29 weeks as our patients. So we cannot apply this in units. We need to study it in units well. We cannot apply adult medicine in metrics. We cannot apply pediatric medicine in neonatology. And they mentioned even some limitations here in their study. And they concluded that, look, just to this statement, the said limitation, we could not investigate adverse effects associated with oxygen therapy. They are af afraid of adverse effects of oxygen therapy in 19 years old adult. So how we should think in units who are uh, very vulnerable to oxygen toxicity. So that is this study. But this uh, other, this study is published in 2014 uh, in the PMC. Uh, and they studied the impact of oxygen concentration on time resolution of spontaneous pneumothorax in term infants. So this study is in term units. So this may be better to our uh, population. And they concluded that supplemental oxygen use or nitrogen wash out was not associated with a faster resolution of spontaneous pneumothorax. Infant is treated with room air, remained stable, and did not require supplemental oxygen at any point of their admission. So it does not have any evidence in units still now. This is a study I will not go through it in order not to waste more time. And this is another um, article in the Journal of Perinatology, and they ask this question. Administration of oxygen, 100% uh, oxygen does not hasten resolution of symptomatic spontaneous for in neonates. I build this quickly, and that is their conclusion based on our observation and the contrary to our hypothesis. So they hypothesize that, uh, as theoretically known, higher oxygen may increase washout. They conclude that 100% oxygen therapy does not offer any significant advantage compared with oxygen saturation targeted therapy. Oxygen saturation targeted therapy, usually in NICU, as you know, we target oxygen uh, between 91 and 95. That's our target, even in pneumothorax, even in pulmonary hypertension. And they said supplemental oxygen should be reserved for those patients who are hypoxic and adjusted to comply with accepted saturation. So you can increase the FIO2 only to achieve the targeted oxygen saturation between 91 and, 90, uh, and 95. And in, in Fenerov, they have written the same, although 100% oxygen given by oxyhood um, lead to nitrogen washout and resolution or decrease the size of pneumothorax, this management strategy has not been adequately evaluated in infants. And that's our summary. Uh, so observation uh, in mild symptomatic spontaneously breathing baby without underlying lung pathology, we can do only observation. That's our first message. Uh, you can observe pneumothorax. Don't rush to intervene if the baby is stable and he can do it. And this time, the visceral blower can absorb the air and you may avoid any intervention. Uh, thoracosynthesis to avoid uh, chest tube insertion or tell you insert a chest tube. Uh, you have to insert a chest tube at any time needed. Either the baby is in um, tension pneumothorax or you feel that the pneumothorax will recur. And you should individualize your decision. This is very important. And we mentioned that above. You can find any pneumothorax, but the baby is decompensating and it may increase or may reaccumulate. So you have to drain it. And you may find a large pneumothorax, as this is the real scenario I show you, a large pneumothorax. And you can treat it by only needle aspiration. And there is no evidence behind the nitrogen washout. This algorithm, I created it uh, from the evidence I have found. I have found if you see a pneumothorax, just look, it is tension or not, and you know what's tension pneumothorax now. If it's tension pneumothorax, just insert a chest tube or do a needle aspiration till you uh, insert a chest tube. If it's not a tension, a tension pneumothorax, look to the baby, he is on assisted ventilation, CBAB or non-invasive ventilation or uh, mechanical ventilated or not. If he is mechanical, if he, if he is on uh, uh, assisted ventilation, 
look to the size of the pneumothorax. If it is small, you can just minimize the uh, mean airway pressure and uh, do close follow-up. If it is large and the baby is on assisted ventilation, in this scenario, um, it may go to tension pneumothorax and the baby may collapse. So better to evacuate it by chest tube. And because the baby is on mechanical ventilation, it may recur. So better to avoid needle aspiration, although you can try it. Uh, but better to insert a chest tube. If the baby is not on um, assisted ventilation, also look to the size. If it is a small and the baby is not on assisted ventilation, just conserve, just observe it. If it is large in pneumothorax and the baby is not on assisted ventilation, you have two options, either to observe him or insert or, or uh, aspirate it. But if it requires, insert a chest tube. Uh, if the lung is unhealthy, here I, here I added two notice, uh, two um, statements. If the lung is not healthy, you may be referred to chest, uh, insert a chest drain because you know this lung is not healthy and the, the air will reaccumulate. And if you don't insert the chest drain now electively, you will insert it under emergent situation. Uh, and if there is bilateral pneumothorax, it's better to uh, put a chest drain, especially if one of them is large, it's better to evacuate it because if both uh, sides went into large pneumothorax, the baby may collapse and you may catch him. Uh, that's it. And now uh, your discussion. Thank you. Th Dr. Sam, I think we need to do more. I hope Dr. Mohammed Abdul Ati and Dr. Abdul Latif uh, can arrange for more topics. Yeah, Dr. Iman is asking for videos. If you're asking about videos for uh, technical insertion of tubes or uh, or needle aspiration, uh, there, there are many videos in the YouTube. There are many videos. As pediatric, should we? I'm sorry again. Many questions, just one. Button. As pediatrician, should I know to insert chest tube, which should rule, uh, or it is the rule of cardiac? No, no, no. If you are working in intensive care, uh, yes, that's a good question. Um, because I worked previously in some hospitals where the neonatologists are were not allowed to insert a chest drain. And when there is an pneumothorax, they call the uh, pediatric surgeon to insert the chest tube. And this is very, very dangerous because the uh, pneumothorax uh, may develop quickly and the baby may collapse. It's a very simple procedure, by the way. I'm not speaking about technical points today, but the chest tube is one of the easiest procedures in intensive care unit. You should learn it. It's very simple. You just see it once and you will do it. Uh, do you do a uh, chest x-ray routinely after clamping of the chest tube and before removing it? Yes, yes, we have to because there is a high incidence of reaccumulation, Dr. Muhammad. Yes, we have to make sure that there is no reaccumulation. We have to repeat it at least once before, uh, before removing the chest tube because there is a high incidence of uh, any, any pneumothorax that is severe enough to make you insert a chest tube, a chest tube uh, it's severe enough to recur. So you don't know the lung has been cured 100% or not. So you clamp it for 12 or um, uh, 24 hours or 18 hours according to the guidelines in your unit, then do an X-ray, then remove it safely. No, uh, tension pneumothorax is, is a clinical diagnosis. Tension pneumothorax, if, is, if the baby is collapsing, I mean, if the, the, the pneumothorax is large enough, is large enough, to cause interference with the venous return and interfering with the cardiac output. So the baby will, will go to desaturation, the bradycardia, don't depend on the X-ray. The X-ray may mislead you. There are many measures how to, I was just seeing an hemothorax yesterday during my call and I was very happy. This baby was transferred to me from another hospital. Because I was very happy because the, the radiologist has measured the, the, uh, the pneumothorax size and he has written this pneumothorax is 35% of the lung volume. I was very happy that the radiologist started to do this. But then it don't depend on the x-ray. Attention pneumothorax is a clinical diagnosis. The, the, you can see it mild in the lateral view, but when you do a cross table or a lateral, uh, I'm sorry, you can see it small in the anteroposterior view, but in other views, it may be large. What, what is the pathology of recurring pneumothorax? Yeah, so uh, Dr. Allah, the recurring pneumothorax, because as we mentioned in the, the pathophysiology, when uh, alveolar sac ruptures, the air makes a track uh, from the peri-alveolar space to the pleura. This peri-alveolar space needs to 
needed some time to heal. So if you drain it and it didn't heal, so uh, uh, it may recur from the same site. Uh, also, uh, some babies has some lung pathology in different parts of the lung. So this tract may heal, but he may develop another tract in another area. I think I could answer the question. So either the initial cause doesn't resolve or the baby has many causes. His lung all over all, he has pneumonia, he has staph pneumonia, he has um, uh, congenital pulmonary emphysema. So these alveoli are very stretched and very thin walled. So it may recur from many other alveoli. So that's why uh, you, you need to observe the baby after clamping the uh, chest tube to make sure that the, the, the pathology is resolved and, and you don't need to uh, reinsert the, the tube after removal. What about removing ICT when baby on mechanical uh, ventilation? Yes, uh, this question, uh, you can still remove the chest tube while the baby is on mechanical ventilation uh, because our babies, especially the extreme bremies, they may stuck to mechanic, mechanical ventilation for very long time. Very long time. You are right. This question is logic because once the baby is on mechanical ventilation, there is a high pressure still. There is a high pressure and the possibility of recurrence is high. Uh, but you cannot keep the chest drain in place for a long time. It's a foreign body. It may cause lung injury or contusion. So uh, better to remove it when you are sure that uh, the pathology are nearly sure that the pathology has resolved and you may not need it, remove it. Because if you insert, for example, you have a baby, a 30 weeker, and he will stay in your unit for four weeks. And the second day of life, he reserve, uh, developed an pneumothorax and he needs a five day of ventilation. You can still remove the chest tube and keep him on mechanical ventilation. Yes, good. Okay, that's a good question. What causes failure of Removal, you mean failure of removal, evacuation of air, you mean? What causes a failure of removal of chest tube? You mean a failure of evacuation. Failure of evacuation, uh, if you insert it in the, in the wrong direction, if you insert it in the wrong direction, so you will not go to the air pocket. So I will tell you a trick here. I'm sorry, I'm missing the question. I can't see it very well. Mm. Okay. So I missed the question. So, oh yeah, what causes uh, what causes failure of uh, removal? Failure of removal if you direct the tube, the chest tube, away from the uh, from the uh, air collection. So if the air is mainly low and you collect it up, direct it up, you may not drain it. Or the tube kinks or a blood clot obstructs the holes of the tube, so you may fail to drain it. Uh, in our unit, we use a pigtail as as a kit. I show you. And when you are inserting a big tail, I don't know if you are using it or not, it's very good, very good, very good tool. Uh, it is a modified Seldinger technique as we use in, in central line and in uh, many other uh, procedures. It's the same procedure. You use it to drain a uh, pleural effusion or peritoneal fluid. So when you are uh, inserting the troker, when you're inserting the uh, guide wire, I'm sorry, just direct, direct the tip of the needle. I may show you a video later on. Direct the tip of the needle toward the largest bucket because if the guide wire went into the wrong way, you cannot redirect the big tail. Mm. What about removing ICT? We said that. What causes failure of removal after complete drainage? After complete drainage recurrence. Needle or tube, better. Nothing is better. Nothing is better. <laughs> Every patient has his better choice. That's why I said in the last choice, please, the last slide, please uh, personalize or individualize your decision. Chest tube may be the best for some one baby and may be very bad for another baby. Just individualize your, your decision. Look to the pneumothorax, babies on, on, on support or not, his lung is healthy or not and then decide what's better for him. Maybe the best is observation. So nothing, we cannot, tube is the best, needle is the best, we cannot say that. We can individualize the decisions. What about removing ICT or okay, baby mechanical ventilation? Can I confirm that there is fistula and how to treat? Uh, Dr. Mahmoud, I'm not sure, but fistula will not happen very quickly in the first, uh, in, the, in, first in 24 or 48 hours, although it may happen and very quickly. Um, 
but usually we don't see fistulas in units because we don't keep the chest tube uh, in place for a long time, but I can search for the answer to this question. I'm not sure about it. Should we wait till extubation? No, we should not wait for uh, till extubation because the baby may continue intubated for a few weeks. In this situation, you need to remove the chest tube. Can a butterfly uh, needle be used? I think I said that. You can use a butterfly. You can use um, uh, angiocath, which is a routine cannula, but use the 20 gauge size. Uh, and there is another type of needle. We can use it, but I don't know, remember the name. I have seen one of them a few days ago. But please. Please, whenever you, you, you use a tool, be familiar with it. If you are familiar with the uh, butterfly, use the butterfly. If you are familiar with the, uh, uh, the angiocast, use the angiocast. Use something you are familiar with. Don't accept that the, the nurse will give you something and use it. You will be amazed. You don't know where the boards open and where it closes. Just make sure that you uh, know your guns well. Can a butterfly be if chest tube become not functioning? Can I introduce new one or removal the old one? You can manipulate it. You can just uh, milk it, redirect it. Um, sometimes you may need uh, to reinsert another one. Maybe you can rewire it and insert another one. You you insert a guide wire, then remove the tube, then insert a new big tail on the same guide wire. Although I have never seen this, but it is it is written in the box. Can we use needle aspiration intention in thorax as initial therapy? We sometimes have to. This we have to use a needle aspiration if it will save the baby until we make sure that the baby is uh, that the uh, chest drain is prepared. Can baby can baby continue on CPAP if pneumothorax occurs? Yes, yes, can be, can be. If the baby, yes, you can, you can continue the, uh, the baby on non-invasive or CPAP after evacuation of the pneumothorax by chest tube, but every time you have to observe, you have to be very careful. Uh, I don't like to insert chest tubes. I like to do procedures, but I don't like to insert a, a tube in the chest of a human. Uh, so whenever you can avoid it, avoid it. If you can do needle aspiration and wait, you can. Uh, I think uh, this is Dr. Muhammad Abdul Latif. Needle aspiration and tension pneumothorax. Yes, you can drain the tension pneumothorax and minimize the map. And don't insert a chest tube. I have done this a few weeks ago. I uh, have a baby with a pneumothorax. He was on non-invasive ventilation. So I continued the observation, then started to increase after a big discussion with the team. So we done a needle aspiration, so the baby improved uh, markedly. Uh, then after a few hours, he reaccumulated air, and then we inserted finally a chest tube. But we were planning to avoid insertion of a chest tube. Thanks, Dr. Mohammed. I don't know. Thank you, Mohammed. Can Dr. Abdul Latif uh, end the meeting? Thank you all. I'm with. Uh, I, can you hear me? I'm waiting for your. Uh, can give local. Yes, I, I'm not speaking here about the uh, the procedure, the technical. Yes, you can give local uh, lidocaine or you can apply emlacrine, or in major situation you cannot. Thanks a lot. Thank you all. Uh, I will be very happy if you uh, make a feedback. We don't have a, a formative assessment for our presentation, but if you can add your comments for uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdullah's group uh, on Facebook, uh, and he will read it so we can improve ourselves next time. I'm very happy to uh, read about the weak points in the presentation. If you have any update or any new evidence, please share it with us. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, now I think there is no more questions. So, Doctor uh, Doctor Emilio, I, I I would like to thank you especially <laughs> from she <laughs> to uh, for joining us, waiting for your feedback. So I don't know. I have to. Uh, I think Doctor uh, Abdul Latif can end the meeting. My mouse is not working. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for more lectures, I, I, I was doing some webinars with a small group on the WhatsApp. We call them the neonatologists. 
uh, we will speak about the DNR in another webinar. We will speak about the approach to inborn error metabolism, but this may need two or three uh, webinars. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Ati is doing a very good effort with his group on the Facebook. I'm eager to, to learn from him and, and uh, listen to him. So uh, I hope we could, uh, we will be able to prepare more uh, presentations, inshallah. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Abdul Ati shared his group. Yes, this is done, nice group. Please, we are waiting for your feedback on this group, on the Facebook, until we uh, make a, a, a formative way of assessment of our presentations. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>